Hi guys, I hope you all are doing well and welcome to the next video of this entire series of Exchange Server 2019. In the last video, we talked about virtual directories in Exchange 2019. We discussed how to configure internal and external URLs for virtual directories and how to create DNS records in local DNS so that users can use Exchange services from domain joint machines. In this particular video, we will be talking about Mailbox database in Exchange Server 2019. We will discuss how Mailbox database is designed. We will talk about the properties of Mailbox database, and then I will show you how to manage Mailbox database using PowerShell and from Exchange Admin Center. If you go by definition, a Mailbox database is a storage unit where mailboxes are created and stored. Mailbox databases can be managed from Exchange Admin Center and from PowerShell as well. In Exchange Admin Center, we will go to servers and then go to databases. And here you will see the databases within your Exchange server. When we install Exchange server, it creates a mailbox database with name mailbox database, and then you will see a good value. This good value is ensure that the mailbox database names are unique. In Exchange Server, every database is created with .edb extension. If you want to check the extension, you can double click on the database and under database path, you will see the extension .edb. Now let's discuss all the properties of this particular mailbox database. Under name, you can see the mailbox database name. Database path will show the full path of the location where this mailbox database is stored in Exchange Server. Let me show you this path. Let's copy till mailbox. Now here you can see the mailbox database name ends with 4113. Ends with 4113. So let's open this database folder. Here you can see transaction logs. If you right click, you can see extension is dot log. So this extension is for transaction log files of the mailbox database. We will talk about transaction log files in a couple of minutes. Apart from that, you will see the database file as well that ends with dot ABB. Next property is last full backup. This property will display the date and time of the last complete backup of the mailbox database. If this field is empty, that means this database was never backed up. Next is last incremental backup. This property will display the date and time of the last incremental backup of the mailbox database if this database was backed up by the admin. Status shows mounted. That means this particular mailbox database is connected to an exchange server. Mounted on server will show the fully qualified domain name of the exchange server to which this particular database is connected to. Master field will display the primary server for the mailbox database. The mailbox server that hosts the active copy of a database is called mailbox database master. Master type field will display the type of the mailbox database master. Server means the exchange server. Modified date will show the date and time the database was last modified. If you'll make any changes within this mailbox database, this date will change accordingly. Next field is server hosting a copy of this database. This field will display the name of the other exchange servers who also have a copy of this database. For example, when we deploy DAG or database availability group, a copy of mailbox database is stored in multiple exchange servers. So in that scenario, you will see the exchange server names that has a copy of this database. Now let's move to the next section that is maintenance. The first property under maintenance tab is journal recipient. First, let's understand what is journaling in exchange server. If you want to preserve a copy of all the emails, those are sent and received by our organization, we can forward those messages to a different mailbox. 
So whenever this data is required, we can simply log into that mailbox and we can get access to that data. This is called journaling. Any email that user has sent or he has received within an exchange organization, that email is stored in a mailbox database. If we want to save a copy of all these emails to a particular mailbox, we will add the mailbox under general recipient. You can add the mailbox from here and then click save. The next property is maintenance schedule. You can use this option to set a maintenance schedule for your mailbox database. This maintenance schedule performs tasks like purging of indexes, removing expired messages from the mailboxes and public folders, removing deleted mailboxes and public folders, and performing defragmentation on the database store. You can customize the maintenance time by clicking customize. You can select a different time for this database maintenance activity. The next property is enable background database maintenance. This option has to be checked so that database scanning can run in the background. If you uncheck this option, in that case, database maintenance schedule will be disabled. If you check this option, the Exchange server will scan the mailbox database once in a day. And if this scanning is failed, this will generate a warning event within Event Viewer. Next property is do not mount this database at startup. This option is unchecked by default. If you check this option and if you restart your Exchange server, this database will not mount automatically to the Exchange server. So in that case, you will have to mount this database manually. Next property is this database can be overwritten by a restore. You can check this option if you want mailbox database to be overwritten during a restore process. Next property is enable circular logging. Before we discuss this property, let's first understand what are the transaction logs in Exchange Server. Whenever an email arrives in Exchange organization, the information store service places that data into the memory and then it writes that data in transaction log files of the mailbox database. Every mailbox database has its own transaction log files that can be identified with dot log extension. Each transaction log file size is 1 MB. So when the transaction log file is full, it is renamed to the next sequential number. Every single data that enters the exchange organization, or let's say an email that enters the exchange organization, is retained in RAM for some period of time. It can be five seconds or it can be more than 60 seconds. And then this data is placed to the database file. So as soon as data reaches the exchange server, it is written into the transaction log files, and then it is placed in mailbox database. Circular logging is a concept of database availability group or DAG. Enabling this option is recommended if you are using mailbox database replication as a backup solution. When circular logging is enabled in a DAG, transaction logs are purged only after they are replicated to all the database copies. And when this option is disabled, transaction logs are purged only after a full backup of mailbox database is done. Now let's move to the next section that is limits. The first property under limits is issue a warning at. As soon as users mailbox will reach to the value that is mentioned under this property, users will automatically receive a warning message that their mailbox is approaching its storage limit. The maximum value that you can mention under this property is two terabyte. Next property is prohibit send at. As soon as user's mailbox will reach the value that is specified under this property, they will not be able to send emails from their mailboxes. The maximum value that you can mention under this property is 2 terabyte. Next property is prohibit send and receive at. As soon as the user's mailbox will reach the limit that is mentioned under this property, they will not be able to send and receive emails. Next is keep deleted items for. Under this property, you can set the number of days that deleted items are retained in a mailbox. For example, when a user deletes an email from his mailbox, 
for how many days you want that email to be retained in deleted items folder of the mailbox. In Exchange Online, this value is 30 days and this cannot be changed. But in Exchange 2019, you can mention a value from 0 to 24,855 days. Next property is keep deleted mailboxes for. Under this property, you can specify for how many days a deleted mailbox will be retained. In Exchange Online, this value is 30 days and this value cannot be changed. But in Exchange 2019, you can mention a value from 0 to 24,855 days. Next property is do not permanently delete items until the database is backed up. This option tells the server that it should not permanently purge an item or a mailbox until the mailbox database has been backed up. This ensures that a copy of the deleted item or deleted mailbox can be recovered from the backup media if required. And from here, you can customize the interval for the warning notifications that will be sent to the users when they will exceed these limits. Under client settings, you can select an address book that Outlook clients will use when you are working in offline mode, cache mode, or in disconnected mode. If you do not specify an offline address book for a mailbox database, then the default offline address book will be used. If you have created an address book manually, you can select that address book from here, and this will be applied on all the mailboxes. Those are within this particular mailbox database. So all the properties that we have just discussed, these properties are applicable to the mailboxes. Those are stored within this particular mailbox database. If you have another database, you need to configure these settings for that mailbox database as well. If you want to create a new mailbox database, you can go to servers, databases, and then click plus. Here, you need to type a name for the database. Under server, you will click browse, and then you will select your exchange server on which you want to create this particular mailbox database. Select the server, and here you can customize the database file path and for the transaction log files as well. This is the default path. If you want to modify, you can change the path from here. If you want this database to be mounted automatically, make sure this option is checked and then click Save. So the mailbox database has been created and now it is asking you to restart Microsoft Exchange Information Store service on this particular Exchange server. So let's go to services.msc. Look for Microsoft Information Store and then click Restart. Now let me show you how to manage mailbox databases from Exchange Management Shell. If you want to check how many mailbox databases you have in your Exchange server, you can run get hyphen mailbox database press enter and this will show the number of mailbox databases their name the server name on which these mailbox databases are created recovery will show you whether these databases are recovered or restored and you can see the replication type as well if you have deployed dag if you want to see the properties of a particular mailbox database, you can run get hyphen mailbox database hyphen identity, and then you can mention the name of the mailbox database. And then pipe FL. So this particular command will list all the properties of a particular mailbox database. If you want to create new mailbox database for that, you can run new hyphen mailbox database. Let me increase the font. Let's make it 18. So the command is new hyphen mailbox database hyphen server. Server will be the name of the exchange server where you want to store this mailbox database. 
we have only one exchange server and its name is exchange then you will mention the name of the mailbox database for example db1 and then you will mention the path where you want to save this mailbox database and the switch is hyphen edb file path let me copy the path the default path of the mailbox databases and that is still mailbox and here we will mention the name of the database and then dot edb press enter let me add this in quotes and now a mailbox database has been created now again you will have to restart microsoft exchange information store service so let's go to services and restart this particular service now if we go to this location where we have created the mailbox database we can see test database that we created from exchange admin center and db1 that we just created from exchange management shell if you want to check a particular property of a mailbox database then you can run get hyphen mailbox database hyphen identity identity will be name of the database and then type the name of the property that you are looking for for example deleted item retention press enter so this is how you can check a particular property of mailbox database if you want to modify a property of a mailbox database let's say we want to modify deleted item retention period then we can run set hyphen mailbox database hyphen identity identity will be name of the mailbox database for which you want to modify this particular property and then we will type the name of the property deleted item retention and then we will mention the period so as of now it says 14 days and let's change it to seven days press enter that's done now let's check the property we have already run this command so now it shows seven days in the next video we will be talking about different types of recipients and how to manage these recipients in exchange 2019 so that is all for now i will see you all in the next video thank you guys thank you for your time take care